You know when you know some days are just going to be very good. Now this is a comparison that I've been wanting to bring you for quite some time, but it's taken a lot of effort to find not just one of these, but one of these with an owner who's kind enough to actually let me have a go in it. And I've been very fortunate to find a lovely guy called James, who runs a company called Definitely Better Hi-Fi. Please buy something from him, I might have a go in it again. And we are gonna compare these two cars. Now, interestingly, James has never driven a Lotus. I have never driven a Cayman GT4. Now, before we get down to the drive, which let's face it, is the most important thing, I was going to take a minute or two to talk to you about the different facts, figures, and the few things that may on paper be important to you. So, let's go. All right, in the yellow corner, we have my all familiar Evora 400. Now, there's a couple of things about this comparison that aren't entirely fair, which I should of course disclose to you guys, and they may or may not make the blindest bit of difference to you. Now the first of which is that it's actually very very difficult to draw a fair comparison or a direct comparison with any current Lotus and Porsche product. Now a lot of people say that the Cayman GT4 is probably the natural competitor for this car and I can sort of see that. Now some people would say that comparing the Evora with any Cayman is totally unfair because it has two small back seats. Some people don't really care whether it has back seats or not, I'm one of them. Now Lotus have just released a hardcore version of the Evora called the Sport 410. That's lighter, tiny bit more power, more track focused, that only has two seats in it and that is probably the most natural fit for a comparison with the Cayman GT4. However, I don't own one of those. I asked Lotus if I could have one for this review and they said no. So I'm afraid you are stuck with the comparison of this and that. That being said, there is a good chance, bearing in mind I've not driven the 410, that this could be the better road car, with the 410 being more track focused, slightly stiffer, that kind of stuff. There are, however, a few unfair things in the Cayman's corner. Let's talk about those. Now the Cayman GT4 is one of a crop of current modern Porsches that have been limited editions and are currently trading, in the UK at least, at significantly over their retail price. So in theory, the price of this car and the price of the Evora should be about the same. However, market forces, demand, collectors, you know, speculators, whatever you want to call it, you're going to pay closer to £100,000 for one of these than you are the sort of £70,000 that you're going to pay for an Evora. So we should bear that in mind. But being as Porsche sold the car for a price pretty much comparable to the Evora, I'm going to say that they're even. Okay, so I want to talk for a moment about the specs of the car because they're actually quite interesting. In most regards, they are pretty much within a margin of error for one another. Now, this is quite an interesting lineup because, in fact, the Lotus is actually the heavier and more powerful of the pair, whereas the Cayman is the less powerful and lighter of the two. You would expect them to be the other way around, of course. Now, the Lotus has the venerable 3.5 litre supercharged Toyota V6, gives 400 horsepower, 302 pound feet of torque. The Cayman is the answer to the age old question what would happen if you put a 911 engine in a Cayman? It's a 3.8 litre flat six, classic Porsche, water cooled, of course, and it develops about 380 horsepower at fairly high RPM, revs to nearly 8,000, whereas the Lotus is all done by seven. Now the trade-off being, the Lotus having a supercharger has a flatter, broader torque curve from lower down. So I'll be interesting to see how they compare. Both cars have pretty long gears. In fact, one of the major criticisms of the GT4 is it's excessively long gearing, meaning that even though the gearbox is good, you can't really enjoy it so much on the roads. We'll find out, of course, in a few minutes if that's actually a real problem. Now, the car has gorgeous, carbon bucket seats from the 918 Spider, and they are some of the best seats I've ever sat in. Just sat in them doing some photography just now and they are the perfect balance of supportive and comfortable. Whether they get tiring or not, I don't know. The current owner of this car says actually they're brilliant for long distances. I think they're much better than the seats in the Evolve 400, but my opinion of Evolve 400 seats is well known. Now, spec times, 
the Lotus is ever so slightly faster, has an ever so slightly quicker 0-60 speed. Both cars have manual six-speed gearboxes. Both cars are mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, and both cars are meant to be focused driver's cars. The GT4 is a real special because it has the front suspension lifted directly from a 911 GT3. The rear suspension is so heavily revised that you cannot swap it with a regular Cayman. Do not mistake this for just a Cayman with a bigger engine. It is a totally different car. So with that in mind, we're first going to start by putting James in my Evora to see what he thinks of the Lotus experience and to see how he compares it with his own car. And then we're going to do the opposite. I'll hop in the Cayman and see what I think of this iconic and legendary instant classic. I wonder if it'll live up to the hype. Let's see. Seating position is completely different. It's interesting, you're yeah. quite close to the front of the road, is it? Well? Yes. Yeah, in yours you feel really down and back. Yes, yes, further. yeah, exactly. You feel like you're sat in the car. Yes. See, with this, I often complain, a lot of people complain, that you feel like you sit too high. I think it's actually an optical illusion because the front of the car is so low. Yeah, uh, because actually, like you say, you see the two cars side by side. Yeah, this the, is lower than yours. Yes, it's lower, yeah. but the, the illusion, like you say, yeah. is that this seems to sit yeah. high. If we then... pull up to one another at traffic lights yeah. and we looked at each other, we'd be either be the same height or I'd be slightly lower. But it, what Lotus have done, because there's no boot in the front, the radiator's there and it's tilted forwards, Right. so it keeps it all low. Right. So okay. it keeps that sort of sharp, aggressive uh, nose at the front. As a Paul shown it, maybe it seems arrogant, I don't know, but I'd say the 911 is probably the best everyday sports car money can buy. Yeah. Um, you know, having driven quite a few of them um, and having owned a few of them. Yeah, well it's um, made its market, hasn't it? That's its, yeah. that's its thing, it's the, it's the super sports car for all seasons yes, type yeah. thing. And there's a, there's a model for every season almost. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you, every day of the week. You yeah, basically, yeah, exactly. Uh, that is the only thing I think with the 911 right, uh, range and uh, it's sort of grown to a point of, I can understand if you're new to the brand, how confusing it could be. Yeah. Um, The other thing, I think this was 75 Caymans, about 65 bucks. Yeah. This probably comes with 10 grand's worth yeah. more options. So by the time you spec, yeah, but that's the spec. thing with the say with a 911 to spec it to an equivalent spec, you're spending about 10 grand more. Yeah, a lot um, more. I mean, um, and then it depends on whether do you consider because the base Carrera is less power, less torque. But then the Carrera S is, is more powerful than this, so it's like, which one do you... Yeah, you sort of, know, again, it doesn't have anywhere no. uh, to compare. Um, it's um, And again, they're different cars. Um, yeah. I think the comment, I mean, the thing is with this, I think what people are surprised by, I think that you've tried to tell people as well, is that it's more usable than people think. Whereas yes. you don't need to tell people that with a Porsche. Some people would consider an F-Type in the same league, whereas other guys would go, no, it's a big wafty GT car. Yeah, it's not. Um, I'm, I'm having, um, when I had uh, the Boxster S in um, 2013, there was two things, or a few things that put me off to do F-Type. Uh, one, it was 20 grand dearer than my car, yeah. uh, and was not as good as my car was, and certainly wasn't as good as a 911, which is what it was knocking on the door of. Yeah. Um, the, um, the guy also said, well, because we went in there, me and Miranda went into the car and he turned around and said to me, well, I've got to take you seriously because you drive a Porsche. <laughs> I had no interest really in dealing with us because we were in sort of tweed jacket and 50-something. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that kind of put me off a little bit as well. Uh, but it's a different machine. Yeah. Um, I don't, it's, very, it's funny, isn't it? I think the, the f is very synthetic. Yeah. You know, the the over-exaggeration of pops and bubbles. You know, mine does pop and bubble, but actually, funny enough, the GT4 noticeably less than the GTS I had previously. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, It's got good feedback, that's the first thing I've noticed, but I think you'll be surprised. I mean, the, the, the e pass systems seem to get a terrible reputation for themselves and people dislike them. Um, it's considerably better uh, on the GT4 yeah. than it was on the previous, on the GT, on the game, obviously, GTS. It's a big, 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 big difference. And the funny thing is, actually, um, technically, it's the same 
rack, I believe, is all the same, but because I think the GT3 front end, and I think they've also software tweaked it, yeah. it is... The suspension is going to have a lot to do with it. I think with electric steering, I think, is one of these things that people have tried to demonise without necessarily... They've done it yeah. because they know it's there. Yes. Because they've been told. See, like, it's a talking point, isn't it? Yeah. Because cars have become too good, so yeah. I think any flaw that they can find yeah. is something for them to talk about, because I think, as we were saying before this, is that... Um, a lot of reviews I don't think are really reviews on people that are, they're, 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 they're car reviews aren't they yeah. that is their job and that's fair enough they're insane to watch I watch them you probably watch them yeah. but they're not really anything they never buy the cars very but, rarely do they own the cars and if they do um, there's probably various reasons for them yeah. buying, them buying a certain car whether that be they like it or whether they no. But so the original the, the, Honda NSX had electric steering, and no one mentioned it. There. No, no. But again, it's sort of, sorry. So go back. So I, so I yeah. think cars are. Oh, name me a bad car. I mean, a genuinely bad car that's been built in the last ten years. A it's, bad it's, car. It's pretty hard to yeah. find one. It, it, yeah. It's so rare um, that I think anything that they can pick up on, and, and people like negativity, don't they? I think yeah. they like. You know, they're not going to say how boring would it be if they go. Oh, 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 this is great, perfect car, yeah. fantastic. But yeah. would you do a thirty-second video for that? You don't need. Um, you don't need anything more than that, so they have to find something in there to, to sort of a talking point. Uh, I mean, I think the, the hot topic for Porsche, I think, with the GT GT price with GT3 was the PDK. Having yeah. driven that, um, you know, there's that argument: oh, it's so quick that you can't react to this. It's actually kind of true. Whenever I drive anybody else's vehicle, even when I go and test drive things, unless it's mine, I don't really take the mickey. Yeah, so the um Yeah, it's compliant. This I think you'll probably find more compliant I'd say compliant, I'd say it's probably more comfortable. The interesting thing is like you said, there's plenty of feel through the steering, but it's lighter than the uh, and it's more immediate I'd say. Yes. Uh, than what the GT4 you'll find. There's probably a bit more progression on it. That's yeah. no better or worse, I think that's just they're just getting different. used to it. Yeah, yeah I find German cars, the steering they tend to allow it to be very heavy. Yeah. Um, like my 993, you'd almost check whether it had power steering. Yeah. There was only just enough yeah. to help you at parking after speed. That. But yeah. you know what the Miranda with girlfriend five foot two size eight yeah. brunette. She much prefers weightier steering. She yeah. prefers a manual. So again, it's, it's all personal preference. I don't even think you know stereotypes. People want something yeah. light. This is quite similar to the Ferrari, the three five five. If the steering's quite light, the gear change is quite heavy. The GT4 is by far the best car I've definitely ever had. Yeah. And again, there are tiny, tiny little flaws. So there's always going to be in everything. And I think in some ways, you have to have flaws, otherwise yeah. you would enjoy the, the emotion. Then it's soulless, isn't it? It's bland. It's yeah. See, I was thinking thinking like, with the interior, say, like, I think the interior in here is a more bespoke interior, but made using lower quality bits. Yeah, Whereas so it, the, yeah. the Porsche's interior is basically the same as every other Porsche. Yeah, but, but the quality it, of the it, big, yeah, yeah, switch gears. They're all very better, nice, yeah. yeah. Um, but again, do you see, so, right, so um, when you go and buy a car and you look at all these things and you take point and you look, blah, 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 blah. But then I sit in the car, when the freaking hell am I looking? Oh, look at the lovely stitch. Yeah. You get to the point where you don't give a monkeys. But no, I like this. I, there's nothing wrong with this. Like I say, I, you could you could very happily look at this as an alternative to uh, yeah. a lower spec or an older 911 or a Cayman or you know anything like that. It's a different machine. Yeah. Um, I think the only problem is um, is the situation of probably Lotus. Um, yeah. You know the dealer network, things like that. You know, I, and it sounds again all boring stuff, but. You know, you don't want to. Like, well, it's important. Cold, cold, cold chest is half an hour, forty minutes away. If I want to yeah. go and get something, you know, if I've got a problem with the car, they send a low loader. You know, yeah. it's. And I think that is part of parcel buying cars these days. It's not 1976 anymore, where you have to part with stuff. And buyers have got choice. Yeah. going to say this but the, that feel I think the GT4 feels slightly pokier but I yeah, don't know I, it's the illusion of the way some cars deliver their power see I 
this never pushes you back in your seat. No. But it's just got, it's like a... It, linear. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very yeah. linear, very, very smooth. Yeah. It, it's, um, no, I, I, again, I, I didn't think I wouldn't like it. Um, am I more impressed than I thought it was going to be? Yeah, probably I am. Yeah. Um, it's, um, well, it's an interesting car to drive because and it's, you don't see them. No. And, I, and I, the only snobby part I probably have with cars is I don't... The GTS wasn't spanked because you don't see as many of them, but you do see boxes and Caymans around. Again, I know the, yeah. the GT4 is still a, a Cayman, but at least you don't see them. And I suppose when you pay that money, you do want some... Exclusivity. exclusivity. Yeah. You don't want every everyone having it. And that was, again, when I uh, drove the... the um, sorry, it's just... Yeah. Sorry. The, uh, the, the, the Focus RS is... Um, it sounds really, really bad, this, but it was just a focus inside, and it, it didn't yeah. drive to me anything better than anything that that level, yeah. I didn't think. Whereas you get an M135i, and that can be pretty anodyne, but it's still got a bit of BMW-ness in there. Yeah. Whereas the, the, the focus, as I say, didn't... Really, whereas this feels very unique, it's its own thing, which is nice, and that should, should be. Yeah, I guess the thing with the Porsche is that depending on your perspective, either the best or the worst thing about a 911 is you could have a 150 grand all singing, all dancing one, yeah. and most people don't no, notice. They don't know. You know, you could park it in the high street, and unless you're a car person, not very much, um, it doesn't stand out. No, so that can be know. good as bad. Like you say, I don't like seeing every, you know, it's nice having some exclusivity, but then there is, yeah, I suppose I'm going to counter arguing what I'm saying, because having the ability to sort of blend in and not yeah. everyone. It depends really. on the day, doesn't it? Because if you're just quickly popping down to the shops, you, you don't necessarily be... want to be like, I've, you know. Th I have had that. I've never had it in any of the other cars, really, but that, the first couple of days I had it, it's exactly that. I went down to Iron, I went and got a few bits from the shop, and both times I got someone stop and chat about the car, and that's lovely, but when, I mean, like today, I've been non-stop yeah. on the phone and doing stuff and rushing around and it's kind of. I, I it's really want to be nice. On, yeah. I really want to be nice because I, I love talking about it. But I got. I kind of got to. Yeah. Cool. Glad you like the Lotus. Yes. Yeah. It's lovely. Right. Oh god. It's so familiar, but also unfamiliar. Do you want the automatic? Oh, throttle blipping. Yeah. Why not? I I use it all the time. Yeah. People say, oh, again, it's one of those things you should. It's sacred. No, it's it's really quite handy actually yeah. driving, just pooling around. It makes the car much smoother. Electric. Ah. Oh, no. Yeah. Down points for them. They all have that now, unfortunately. Yeah. They haven't bothered changing that dial since the 996. No, no, like, yeah, why do like, they have 25 mile an hour increments? Yeah. I don't understand. There must be a way. I don't know. That's a good, yeah, I've never noticed it. It is 25 mile an hour. Yeah. That. I think speed wise, it's pretty much on par yeah. with the, On paper, they're on par. Yeah. Um, The throttle travel on this is very short. You yeah. have a physical pedal movement. There's not a lot of it. No. Actually, the gearbox is actually more similar to the Avoras than I thought. Yeah. See, historically, yeah. Lotus have had real problems with their gearboxes. Um, oh, okay. Do it right here if you want. We'll go. It'll be a yeah. sort of through a housing estate, then we'll come That's out fine. eventually where we we should do. Yeah, you were saying that. No, the Avora was fine. Uh, yeah. This gets a little bit better as the engine warms up, the gearbox yeah. warms up. It is much nicer. Very notchy and a bit. You kind of have to be a bit firmer with it. Um, yeah. Well, see, I like that. See, the the um, the Avoras isn't buttery smooth, but it does exactly what you want. It's like yes. it's just, you can feel it moving. Yeah, it's a rifle action. It yeah. is very much that kind of snap, and it goes in. It's a cliche, but it's very yeah. accurate yeah. description. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not resisting me, but I can feel it you have, working. You have to do something. It's not just going to slot in. You have yeah. to make sure you it's in, in gear. I mean, Lotus have, have put a lot of effort in because it's a cable-driven thing in the Lotus. Right. So uh, making a cable shift that good is, is bloody difficult. Yeah. Uh, whereas this would be rod linkage. Right. Okay. It's an easy card. You know, never driven one, never sat in one before about an hour ago. Totally easy car to just get in yeah. and, and just, yeah. just and just drive. Yeah. You know. No, it's not intimidating. No, which is where cars in general have come on so Leaps so far. Bells, yeah. Um I mean, say like the um you know, a Ferrari or something or a Lamborghini from the nineties, you know, if you had a friend of mine to go, you'd be like It's intimidating, uh, yeah, because I don't know, yeah. Um uh, whereas something like this, it's not okay, it's still got a hell of a lot of performance, but it's a much more pliable car yeah it, it's it's friendly you know for, for poodling about town it doesn't hate you no 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 okay. no 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 
it's not uncomfortable. It's firm. No. I think your car is probably slightly. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit it's a bit busy on the suspension, yeah. but it's not not bone shaking. No, 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 no. Um, hard. It's not as hard as I thought it might have been. Um, we'll find out in a bit. Because when, when you pile on the speed, I find that's where the suspension comes into its own. Yeah. Yeah, it's got plenty of torque from low down yeah. as well. Disconnected. No, 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 no. That's what I said to you. I think it's quite interesting. People bash it. Actually, yeah. people, you, well, you've never driven this. You've got in it. Yeah. And I think if I hadn't told you, you yeah. didn't know. I don't think you'd certainly think the pad system. It's no. definitely electronic. No, uh, I think it's, it's the. Um, you get. I think you get less texture. Yeah. Through the system, but yeah, the maybe. important messages are still being yes. conveyed. Yeah. Um, you know, it's still having something of a conversation with you. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which means then you get into, say, from the, the Evora to the Elise, it's like peels back a, a, a huge... The, the difference between the Evora and the Elise is much, much bigger than the difference between the Evora and this. Right. Um, yeah, that's like a 50% difference, whereas this is like a 10% difference. Yeah, yeah, difference. and it's, it's differences as to which probably you prefer. But, yeah, um, I like this. This is nice because it's, it's similar to the Evora in that you get enough feedback that... When you go into a corner, you know you're oh, going to make it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know inspiring. when you've overcooked it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's very progressive. That's what yeah. I say to a few uh, sort of friends have asked about the car. And I said, you know, when you get on it, you can. The car has got. It's, it doesn't snap like an M car. And again, no. a bashing in cars because I've had two through to six, but they are much snappier. And the, the, the uh, range of um, yeah. O cock is much smaller and much sharper than it is in yeah. this. Um, this is more progressive, and, it, and I don't think it's better for it because you can you can exploit the car more. In the real world, yeah. there is no speed difference no, between the two. Not, really, no. I think on a on a track, you would be measuring who's the better driver. Yes, right. Really. But that's the same as anything. I think if you took this against someone in a GT3, you could probably say the same. Yeah. Because it's you know how, how do you get quicker? Upgrade the driver. You know, it's well even in the on the track day that I did with the Evora, there's guys there in Elises, and the reality is. I only start to pull an Elise in over 100 mile an hour. Yeah. And you need a fair straight to get up to yeah, those kind yeah, of speeds. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, even, you basically you need to be somewhere like Woodbridge. You need yeah, to be doing yeah. a straight line drag race yeah. to really appreciate it. The difference between um, the two, yeah. But it, it, it's a well, what it is, it's quite a well balanced car. Yeah. Nothing in particular, um, say like with the M4, the M4 is dominated by the engine. Yes, yeah. And it's not a good thing. <laughs> Um, whereas the M cars, when they're good, oh, yeah. they're all parts equally. Yes. And this is definitely a car where you're like, yeah, it's got the right amount of power, uh, it feels nice. My only sort of criticism, and it's not really a criticism, it's more of an observation coming from the Evora, is that I've gotten used to having much better visibility down there. Yeah. The driving position is just fundamentally different. Uh, that said, I'd love these seats in my car. <laughs> uh, these are really, really nice. Yeah. Is there a reversing camera? There on? is no reversing. You can't buy this, I believe, with uh, parking sensors even. So no. Oh wow! Yeah. Reversing camera and parking sensors standard on the Evora. But you you like it then? <laughs> Love it. It's. Yeah. I, I suspected that I would. Yeah. And I'm sure there will be people watching who will be going, you know, ah, oh, bloody cop out. You know, he's just saying it's nice because he's got to drive it. No, if it was rubbish. No, I tell you. Yeah. Um, it's the same but, with the Lotus device. Yeah, yeah, it's not my cup of tea. No, I yeah. generally very much. Enjoy I mean, it. I, you know, I was going to buy one. Uh, oh, okay. But, you know, like I said, I then got upset at the fact that I would have to have paid 25 grand over list or more to get one, uh, yeah. which I simply did not have. No. So, uh, you know, it's that's why it's to me, it remains a deeply frustrating car, because it's a brilliant car, 
really, really, really that nice. Was map, almost very difficult than yeah. if you want to play uh, Amos, yeah. which is, um, you know... Well, and that's going to be a stumbling block for a lot of people, because there's a lot of people out there who are going to sit, uh, who are going to look at this and go, 100 grand for a Cayman? Yeah. I, you must be joking. Well, it is, well, it is worth 100, <laughs> it is 100 grand. It is. It, it's a nice car. It's just I wish that they had made more so that... You know, we could have all had one. Yeah. Would have been lovely. Uh, you down here. No, keep no, going, yeah, keep going. But it just grips and goes and goes and yeah. goes. I mean, I give up way before the car does. Yeah, very friendly, very nice. Yeah, the ride is the biggest surprise. I well, expected you put it, it would be. in the firmer setting, yeah, you can stick see it much further. Not that much. It's, it's, it becomes more noticeable, I think, the more you use it, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, it'll slowly flatter. adjust. Yeah, it's the bumps are a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah, you, you feel, feel it a tiny bit more. Seat, your pants, you can feel it through the chair. You the seat, yeah. you can feel it. It's much more. Uh, seats are amazing. Yeah, they just hold you in. You can seats. lean on it. Yeah. Yeah, the pickup at five is really up. See, I yeah. think the Avora. Yeah, have you read by it because it just screams if you put it down a second. Conclusion time. So, now, here's my opinion, and this is not a cop-out. If you think it is, tell me, and honestly, this result has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the kind and generous owner of this lovely red Porsche is standing right over there. I declare the result of this contest a draw. Why do I say that? Okay, I expected these to be two totally different cars. They are from very different manufacturers, with very different budgets, made using very different methods, with very different materials, with kind of different aims as well. And I was secretly quite worried that basically the GT4 was gonna hand the Avora its ass on a plate. Actually, that didn't happen at all. The cars were unbelievably similar to drive, and I really, really didn't expect that. Not, not in the least. Now, for a few reasons. Number one, I used to have a 911 with a sports suspension on it, and it was bone-shakingly punishing. And this GT4 is actually really compliant. <laughs> that completely shocked me. Let's face it, I know that Porsche sold this car at a lower price than the Lotus, but they have massive resources, they benefit from being a huge company, and as we know, this car has a lot of parts completely stolen from much, much more expensive 911s. So, I was so, so happy when the Evora not only was not shown up, it completely held its ground. On the road, there is nothing to separate these two cars, genuinely, in terms of pace or in terms of feel. Okay, let's start with the more mundane stuff. Storage space. The Cayman has two boots, very practical. The Evora has one boot at the back, which is a different shape. If you're a golf player, that's quite important. If you have a small child or two, then there are two tiny back seats in the back of the Evora 400, not the 410, that could be quite important for you. Or you just get a free leather-lined parcel shelf out of the deal. So let's talk interiors. Okay, so the interior in the Cayman is definitely made with higher quality materials to a higher standard. Now there is switch gear and parts in the Lotus that are pinched from 15-year-old Fords or GM cars, and I'm not gonna pretend that's not the case. But the interior works really, really well, and it is a very bespoke interior. You know, an area where the Porsche maybe suffers for having the nice interior that it does is that basically, if you stepped into this after having got out of, say, a 40 grand entry-level Boxster, you would be hard-pressed to tell the difference. You know, it's the same interior as basically every other Porsche of this generation. That's either a good or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. The seats in particular are a highlight. Those are fantastic. They are hands down better than the ones in the Evora. But my opinion of Evora seats is well known. So on the road, in terms of outright pace, it doesn't seem like there's much between them. Certainly you would have to have some sort of private road or test track to find that out. When it came to the drive, they were equally as close. On the subject of steering, the Lotus definitely had a slight edge. There's a little bit more texture through the wheel, a little bit more detail. You could feel the road a tiny bit better. Possibly that's because the Lotus has a hydraulic setup rather than the electric power steering that the Cayman does. 
I would say the suspension on the Lotus is also a little bit better. It certainly takes the bumps a tiny bit more, but it is slight. As I said, the Cayman I expected to have a punishing ride, and it really didn't. In fact, even in its sportier setting, it wasn't that bad. However, the Cayman's engine has a lot more character than I thought it might. It is the engine from a base 911. It is not a full-blooded GT engine, and that is probably the only area where this car isn't a, a full-on GT car. But make no mistake, this is still a totally different proposition to a normal Cayman. I have driven normal Caymans, this bears no resemblance to them whatsoever, okay? In terms of a normal Cayman versus an Evora, Evora wins every time, but then it should because it's 20 grand more expensive, okay? So that's kind of how that works. But the engine in this is really nice. It's got a little second wind at about 5,000 RPM, which you don't really expect, kind of rushes to the red line. It's good. But then the Evora's engine doesn't feel like the poor relation that you might think it does because of where it's been sourced. Same thing with the gear shift. You know, Porsche's quality of gear shift is legendary and Lotus tend to get a fair bashing for the quality of their gear shift. Now they put a hell of a lot of work into making the gear shift in the Evora 400 miles better and they've achieved it. You know, they've changed it from being something that was thoroughly unpleasant, straight past not getting in the way and to actually enjoyable to use. Is it quite as good as a shift in the Cayman? Not really, but then you're talking about you know, a microscopic amount. It's not something you would suddenly get in a car and go, oh, the gear shift in this is better you wouldn't really notice. You know, then you come down to things like weird omissions, like for example, the infotainment in the Porsche is much, much better, but it doesn't have parking sensors or a reversing camera, which would be bloody handy because the rear visibility out of this car is no better than it is out of the Evora. The Evora parking sensors and a reversing camera are standard. Go figure. Looks wise, which do you prefer? Basically choose yourself because, you know, that better, that better, I don't know, it looks are completely subjective, just as the sound of the car is completely subjective. Maybe you've got more affinity for the brand, maybe you want a British car and you don't want a German car. You know, these are the little things that would actually be what makes the decision for you. You know, the reality is that if it's the drive that you're interested in, <laughs> they're so close. The really, really sad thing here is that basically not enough people are going to sample both of these cars. Both brands have got really passionate followers and both cars have people that will basically paint them in a certain light before they've gone anywhere near them. You know, I've heard it a hundred times, you get people talk about Lotus, oh yeah, lots of trouble, yada, 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 yeah, okay, great, we've heard it all before, we don't need to hear it again. And then people talk about, oh, Porsche, ah oh, yeah, well, there's millions of them, you know, soulless German Euro boxes, yada, 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 okay, fine, yeah, great, okay. You know, that's your opinion, fine. If you are sat on the middle though, or you are open-minded enough to give both of them a try, I wholeheartedly suggest that you do. Now, the chances are more likely that you're interested in the Cayman more than you're interested in the Lotus. Okay, that's not necessarily the case for a lot of my viewers, but for the general public, I would say awareness of the Cayman is certainly much higher. That's definitely somewhere where the Evora suffers. So many people out there just don't even know that it exists and they definitely don't know what it is, or they certainly think that maybe it's just an oversized Elise, and it absolutely isn't. You know, in fact, if you've never driven a Lotus before, the Evora 400 is possibly the best introduction because coming from something like a Cayman, the Evora doesn't ask you to make the sort of sacrifices in comfort and basically spinal curvature that something like an Elise does. It's a fully mature car. It's a properly good car. In some ways you could say that the Evora is the sort of spiritual victor because market forces have dictated that the Cayman is presently a much more expensive car, but I can't hold that against Porsche. If you are in the market for a Cayman, and for whatever reason, you're thinking about driving an Evora, you owe it to yourself to do it. I would not blame you if you chose the Cayman, and they're two great cars. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. As always, please like and subscribe, comment below, tell me what we wanna see next. I can't promise I can make it happen, but I'll do my best. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's fine.